Dmitry Mirapolsky, St. Petersburg Econ University of Economics, Doctor of Economics, Pyotr Lemeshenko, Head of the Theoretical and Institutional Economics Department at the Economics University of Belarus, Doctor of Economics. According to the federal law, as of August 23, 1996, number 127, St. Petersburg State University has been granted an exceptional right to award academic degrees. The procedure is stipulated in a decree issued by St. Petersburg State University as of September 1, 2016. The dissertation board is considered illegitimate unless uh, two thirds of its uh, of the appointed composition is present at the meeting. But the qu the quorum is here. All the four members of the dissertation board are here. And may I declare the rules of the procedure? The overall time frame is no more than two hours. First, a short report by the chairman on the document submitted by the defendant, five minutes. A short report by the defendant on the key provisions of the research, 15 minutes maximum. Questions to the defendant, no more than two minutes per question. All of the reports were uh, downloaded to St. Petersburg State University website, so I urge all the members of the dissertation board to focus on questions and recommendations only. Ten minutes per each member. Defendants' responses to the questions of members of the dissertation board. Open discussion to follow to be participated by all those present in the room. Please be relevant. Five minutes per speaker. I urge those wishing to take the floor to register in advance in a registration list. Please introduce yourself before speaking. Next point, a defendant's dip replies. Five minutes maximum to follow by the address of the research supervisor. Five minutes break before open voting to vote on whether the defendant has passed or failed. Next, open voting by name, count of vote, and registration of the results in the protocol. The next point is the decision making, whether the defendant has passed or failed. And lastly, the concluding remarks of the defendant, two minutes maximum. Before we start implementing the rules of the, proce the procedure, I urge everyone to switch off their mobile devices. Thank you for compliance. May I also inform you that we are having audio and visual recording, which is broadcast online at St. Petersburg State University website. Simultaneous translation into Russian and English is provided. So the first point is the report of the chair. The dissertation submitted by Igor Garkavinko, Theory and Practice of Trade and Customs Policy in Post Reform Russia, 1861-1914, in the specialty 080001 Theoretical Economics was accepted for defense by a relevant decree of the Research Secretary, the composition of the dissertation board has been approved by a decree as of October the 2nd, 9852-1. May I declare the meeting open. The defendant has submitted the following documents. First, application address to Rector Kropachev to consider the dissertation submitted on September 4, 2017. A report by the research supervisor, Doctor of Economics, Ivan Blagich. The list of publications including 10 research papers, including six 
papers published in the journals uh, enlisted uh, by, recommended by the Higher Attestation Commission of Ministry of Education and Science. Next, a certificate to certify that the defendant uh, has studied in the postgraduate department in the specialty theory of economics. Recommendation submitted by the Vice Rector, uh, Mr. Aplonov. The university degree and the dissertation in soft and hard copy drafted according to GOST requirements and printed according to GOST requirements. I should note that all the above mentioned documents are in compliance with point 12 provision 3 submission of the dissertation of the academic degree awarding procedure in St. Petersburg State University. May I now give the floor to the defendant 15 minutes maximum. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear distinguished members of the Dissertation Council, I am very happy to greet uh, uh, you all in this wall, within these walls, and, and this is a great honor for me to be here because I've been uh, working hard uh, uh, to reach to this point, to reach this point, uh, and I would like to uh, to draw your attention to to my thesis, and I'm going to uh, make a presentation. Um, about uh, my thesis, and I hope that uh, you will enjoy it. The, th the theme of my thesis is the theory of practice of trade and customs policy in post-reform Russia, uh, 1861 to 1914. The relevance is that uh, Russia is seeking um, uh, what uh, tariff and uh, what customs policy should develop and the economic policy. And of course, uh, uh, we have to refer to the past uh, because uh, Russia is part of different unions. The Eurasian Economic Union, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, BRICS, the WTO is. Um, and uh, if we analyze the uh, economic policy, we can predict what the results we will gain in the long term. And um, we have to look at the uh, economic theory and how uh, it uh, assessed uh, tariffs and uh, customs policy in the past, and especially uh, that uh, we have now living under sections. And, uh, and uh, uh, the, the government policy uh, of uh, government in, t in terms of tariffs and customs uh, uh, first uh, came to the fore uh, after n 1861. Uh, and the research uh, grew out of, of this time as well. Uh, and of course, um, uh, we have to name here the, the works of Al uh, uh, Chupr, of uh, Miklashevsky, Kulishev, Goldstein, uh, Leshenko, etc. And uh, also um, Russian scientists, uh, uh, such economists as uh, the, uh, Stein, Leshenko, Kromov, uh, Balkin, Bakamazov, and other. And of course, other public uh, uh, figures also contributed to this uh, uh, field. And of course, uh, well, but there are some areas that uh, need discussion further. Uh, in trade and customs uh, policy, how it tr got transformed from uh, from liberal um, uh, policy to protectionism, and um, you know what uh, free trade zones, um, uh, what role they played uh, in this uh, economic policy. The goals and uh, objectives of my dissertation research are presented uh, on this slide. Um, uh, the first uh, one uh, is to that I pose the, the goal that I posed is to investigate the common features and specific features of trade and customs policy in post reform Russia. The second is to identify the reasons for the transformation of trade and customs policy from liberal regulation of trade and customs policy to protectionism. 
the third is to uh, is to show changes in trade and customs policy in Russia uh, uh, in the context of state monopoly capitalism to reveal the features of the commercial and industrial policy uh, uh, in the context of accelerated industrialization. The fourth is to reveal the reasons for the formation of customs unions and free trade zones before the First World War and um, and uh, in terms of separate uh, law or, and the influence on the customs policy. The fifth is to reveal uh, the distinct distinctiveness of schools and uh, of uh, research and trade of customs policy and to show the interrelation and mutual uh, influence of theory and practice uh, in substantiate, substantiating trade and customs policy. The following permissions are presented in my um, uh, the thesis uh, that I am defending and of course they constitute the scientific relevance of the work. First um, I am talking about this. Trade and customs policy in Russia in 1861 to 1941 reflected the desire of the state to develop its own industry. The the second is the peculiarity of the tariff policy of Russia was the normative unification of customs duties and at the same time the measures in practice of the opposite trend in the form of the so-called reverse tariffs and tariffs establishing their original differentiation. Third, under the conditions of state monopoly uh, capitalism, conventional tariffs uh, were established in Russia with the countries of East, Western Europe and at the same time with the countries of, e of the East, uh, Russia used autonomous tariffs. And uh, next, before the First World War, customs unions and free trade zones began to be formed. Contradictions uh, of this period led to the customs war between Russia and Germany. And also, uh, the next thing is the trade and customs policy in the uh, is the is that trade and customs policy within uh, the context of uh, of um, uh, state capitalism uh, was directed at acceleration of the economy. And the next one is the peculiarity of schools and uh, research. Um, uh, research uh, uh, directions of trade and custom policies in the in the period under review was determined by tasks that can be solved in practice. Um, and um, th this is, for, first of all, in Russia, it was the desire to catch up with the West in industrial development and to overcome territorial and economic inequality. The theoretical and methodological basis of the research um, uh, in consistent a the works of the of uh, Russian and foreign uh, scholars uh, of the second half of the 19th century and the early 20th century on the economic policy of the states B is the official documents and documents of a private legal nature that reveal the genesis and the evolution of economic policy instruments C periodical literature uh, revealing the mechanisms of formation of mass of public opinion and the views especially with a view on economic policy and D bibliographic sources and indexes, indexes uh, uh, that have to do with uh, economic problems of the development of Russia in the late 19th century and the 20th early 20th century in the first chapter, the evolution of the trade and customs policy in Ru of Russia from the beginning of the capitalist reforms of the 1860s to the counter-reforms of the 1880s, the theoretical grounds uh, that set the direction for the development of trade and customs policy from free trade to protectionism were examined. And uh, we, uh, I looked at the main stages of the tariff policy and uh, first of all, uh, I can say that after the Crimean War, the liberal trail trend of economic thought in Russia, uh, of course, uh, liberals criticized the protectionist trade and customs policy of, uh, of uh, uh, Minister Conkrin. The liberals proceeded from the possibility of developing along the path of Western Europe, from which uh, uh, and uh, 
and the pivotal point of that policy, of course, was free trade. And the liberal tariff policy of 1868 reduced duties on uh, 152 articles and called them on... Uh, uh, and also, uh, you know, that affected the, both the uh, sea and land border customs. And of course, uh, without liberalism, uh, this partnership uh, uh, was not possible, they, uh, they thought. And uh, especially in the railway construction, Russia Russia, uh, of course, drew on Western technology and uh, on rail and locomotive production, for example, and of course they used Western, Western loans. The Russian economy did not even develop along the path of catch-and-up development, but along the way, of, but you know the pro the uh, pr protectionism uh, that uh, came on the fore. Uh, reversed uh, this um, this problem and uh, Russia began to develop uh, uh, as a, an appendage as a semi a semi colonial um, uh, territory to the west um, as uh, uh, Vita noted in, in 1880, the unification of the equalization of railway tariffs was carried out in the domestic must market of Russia. This contributed to the redemption of the treasury of the railways. Thanks to the equalizing tra tariffs, the old Ru all Russian agricultural commodity market was finally uh, um, formed, despite the fact that the main industries influencing the formation of the industrial regions were textile and food. New industrial regions appeared on the Russian economy economic map, uh, uh, such as Donetsk and Baku. And uh, at the second uh, stage, uh, that was in uh, 1885 to 1900, uh, oh, oh, that I've focused uh, in my uh, paper, Russia entered the stage of so-called economic development uh, and economic growth, or was called, uh, uh, referred to in, in history as modern economic growth. And uh, Russia had never experienced that. And from the middle of the uh, 1880s, the tariff policy and the trade policy was uh, trying to uh, accelerate industrialization in Russia. And um, as the necessary means, uh, it included, um, uh, was to attract, um, it was included the redistribution of capital in favor of heavy, heavy industry. And the fastest way to attract advanced technology was to accumulate foreign exchange, of course, and, and golden reserves as well. And, um, and of course, uh, Russia exported grain and um, uh, the f timber and other agricultural products. Um, and the support of uh, export was a strategic, um, a strategic policy of the Russian government. Uh, but of course, the instability of world prices, the dynamics of the ruble exchange rate, and the related export if uh, volatile efficiency uh, limited the growth of exports and of course uh, uh, impeded Russian development and um, and uh, of course um, there was a uh, there was a, a, a relative collapse of Russian economy that uh, that uh, uh, impeded um, the the policy of uh, Vite uh, and uh, his predecessors uh, diminished the golden reserves and uh, hit uh, the economy so hard. On this slide, um, slide 8, you can see the unevenness of Russia's territorial development, which, uh, according to the domestic to national economists, one was one of the reasons for the narrow, narrowness of the domestic market. The, the role of the state under these conditions was to compensate for the narrowness of the internal capital market uh, both public, uh, with both public investment and the f support of large private capital. 
During this period, the state passed from fiscal foreign trade policy to the policy of encouraging and protecting the domestic producer, both on the domestic and foreign markets. And um, Sergei Yulevich Witt uh, was the uh, mastermind of this policy and the main driver of this. Uh, under him, uh, uh, trade representations of Russia were opened uh, and uh, as, uh, it was uh, with him that foreign trade policy was interpreted as foreign trade and uh, a network of consular institutions cooperating with trade agencies and bank institutions were developed. Russia began to uh, get rid of foreign mediation and trade. And Russia began to understand that uh, you cannot use the same tariffs with uh, all countries uh, f and uh, differentiated that. Conventional tariffs were established with the countries of Western Europe and autonomous with the countries of the East. And um, a committee was created uh, that included um, experts uh, and 62 representatives from the business community, seven economists and nine people represented the agrarians. They developed the so-called Mendeleev tariff, uh, which set different rates for import and export and for domestic, uh, for domestic trade. During this period, sharp discussions and uh, heated discussions on trade and customs policies on relatively free markets for the development of capitalism in Russia flared up in the academic circles of Russia. In particular, representatives of industrial circles and agrarians believed that a high level of competition in world markets, the struggle for markets, pushes Russia to the periphery of the international division of labor. Uh, Russia, uh, of course, uh, had technical, well, experience, experienced technical backwardness, uh, lack of capital, unfavorable climatic conditions, additional costs for the delivery of goods, which greatly impeded penetration of foreign markets. And even if, uh, even if uh, the Russian industry managed to capture a part of the world market, it would not be able to effectively use it because of lower rate labor productivity and therefore the relatively high cost of goods. What else would I like to say? The practical importance of the study um, is, uh, has to do with the, um, uh, the possibilities of applying the findings and the results to the theoretical justification of trade and customs policy in the context of deepening and unf unfair competition in the world market. The main provisions of the work can be could be used in teaching and uh, training courses in at university level uh, in such uh, economic fields as the history of customs and tariff policy of Russia in the second half of the 19th and the early 20th century. Uh, other courses including history of the national economy, of the Russian economy, history of economic thought in Russia, uh, history of the state and municipal institutions in Russia. The theoretical significance of the work lies in the fact that the results obtained allowed us to, do be to better understand the patterns of development of trade and customs policy and uh, arguments uh, and conclusion clarify the concept of Russia's economic policy um, in the state's monopoly period. Thank you very much uh, uh, the, uh, the questions from the, from the uh, reviews. So my question is as follows. In your dissertation, you consider various scientific approaches to the economic policy of the government. What's your take on the following fact? Uh, in the early 20th century, which schools were the most influential in terms of the economic and trade policy in Russia? So you mention a vast majority of uh, theoreticians, Holstein, uh, and so on and so forth. But what can you say about economic schools? Well, speaking about Russian uh, traditions, well, I have uh, mentioned the names of these uh, scientists. The uh, trade and customs policy of the early 20th century was closely was dependent on the fast industrialization 
and protectionism. Meanwhile, we should be aware of the fact that this that a number of conventional agreements with Western countries were typical for those times in the late 19th century, the so-called trade in customs war with Germany was over, to follow by an agreement, a conventional agreement, which was the fundamental agreement to, to be followed by other conventional agreement with uh, other countries, including Bulgaria. This time frame from the in, from the uh, from 1900 to 1914 was just a moderate period. Distinguished Mr. Gerkavinko, uh, you failed to mention the practical importance of your research, but it is extremely relevant to allow us to have an outlook. So what's your take on Russia's contemporary trade and customs policy? Well, as I said, in contemporary Russia, we are looking for some specific pattern of trade and customs policy. Quite often, the historical experience is overlooked by our authorities today. What we see today is a chaos of various tools. Therefore, it's very difficult for me to assess it and to have some clear understanding where it's all going. Quite often, the developments in trade and customs policy are shaped by some whimsical decisions. So I think that this is something that this is something to be thought about in the future. Other questions? My question will be a follow up to the previous question. In your research, you say that the expansion of liberalism resulted in the fact that protectionism was reinforced. What were the reasons behind that? And can we see the same trend in Russia today? Well, obviously, the main reason behind the expansion of protectionism is manifested just in statistics. By, 19, by 1866, the golden reserves were drained out, so that there was the uh, negative saldo, the negative balance. We should also note that there were the fees and the the customs duties that were tailored so as to support industries and the industrialization overall. Equally important is the fact that Russia is a vast country always followed the will of the Tsar. Thus, the entire uh, time frame of Alexander III's rule manifests a very strict and very clear-cut policy. 
because he was a man of authority. Well, today our reserves are not drained out, but we do not have a, a, a czar who would be a man of authority. Can we observe the same expansion of protectionism in contemporary Rut Russia? Are the trends the same today, or are they different? Amid globalization, it's difficult to give some estimates. Apparently, there are some trends of that kind, but, you know, everything comes and goes away. So protectionism could be followed by some different approach or an opposite approach that would contradict protectionism. It will be, might be followed by Western technologies that will be adopted. However, Russia was always lagging behind. Thank you. Mr. Gerkavinko, your research covers quite a vast time frame from 1861 to 1914, which is over 50 years, right? For example, in 1910, which is within your time range to Gondoranovsky in his speech at the meeting of in, uh, businessmen said that Russia is has not sufficient capital and Russia needs foreign capital for further industrialization. Did you consider the issue of capital flows in Russia in the that day Russia as a dimension of trade and I should say it's an important dimension in trade and against that setback what's your outlook on the policies that encourage foreign capital into Russia so in those times so the trade policy and the capital flow are those two things apart or are they very uh, interdependent well you speak about protectionism you speak about the lack of foreign capital to boost industrialization therefore booming industrialization what was it like in those times our stereotype is that the booming industrialization took place in the end of 1920s. But here you are speaking about booming industrialization, flourishing industrialization in the late 19th century. Do you have some statistics to prove this fact? I mean, it's a boring question, but I'm looking forward to having your answer. Thank you very much for the question. It is indeed a very uh, thought through question. Speaking about the relevant time frame, I should say that everything started in, nine, in 1861 with the first monetary reform that failed. Therefore, Russia lost all its gold reserves. And this was yet another uh, catastrophe for Russia after the Crimean War with the budget deficit increasing, rocketing up to six times. That was just an economic catastrophe. And therefore, all, all the policies were targeted at accumulation of foreign reserves and thus creating favorable environment for foreign investment. And for establishing of uh, plants and production capacities. 
in the end of 1980s, from the end of 1980s to the uh, early 20th century, Russia lost approximately 2.5 billion rubles. And these were loans that Russia had to repay. And I should also say that the construction of railways was uh, financed by the French, I should say. It is the French joint stock companies that paid for the construction of railways, and the railways were private, which resulted in an impetus to provide industrial development. But in practice, it turned out that private railways was something unacceptable for such a vast country as Russia was, so that later railways were funded by the government. Sergei Vita, who used to work at the railways and ultimately at the end of his career he was the Minister of R Railways and the Minister of Finance. In 1880s he wrote a paper considering railway fees and prices. Speaking about foreign capital inflow, I should note that it was a positive measure and it proved to be beneficial for Russia because it gave an impetus to Russian industries and promoted their development. Thank you so much. Let's now proceed to declaring the reports. We have all the members of the uh, dissertation board have submitted their reports. Professor Dubiansky, Professor Lemeshenko, Professor Miropolsky, Professor Pashkus, Professor Sukharev. All the reports were submitted duly and duly downloaded onto the St. Petersburg University website. May I, as a moderator, as a chair, start with my report and to be followed by the reports of other members of the dissertation board. Not to waste time, I will focus on recommendations and some critical remarks only. Overall, my report is positive. I give a favorable assessment, but there are some recommendations to Mr. Garkavenko. Well, my first recommendation is as follows. In the third paragraph of uh, Chapter 1, which is devoted to the theory of Russian trade and industrial policy, it would be much favorable to have some insight into in what industrial policy of the then Russia looked like. And I'm also excited to know what the defendant means by trade and industrial policy. My second recommendation says that in the late 19th century, Russia introduced the golden ruble. That was the initiative by Vita, the Minister of Finance. And this is something that has already been mentioned today, not but once. I should note, however, that Vita himself wrote that this measure devalued Russian ruble. But in fact, it has accumulated in its value. Russian ruble became stronger, which resulted in an inflow of capital, and this was proved by the fact that the currency, the national currency, became stronger. 
So, Mr. Garkovinko failed to mention this very important aspect, which influenced dramatically on foreign trade. Next, it would be favorable to refer to the works by Struve, a very famous uh, researcher in economics, a luminary, and in particular his work on the trade policy of Russia, St. Petersburg, 1913. And lastly, uh, judging by the genre of your dissertation, you're expected to have lots of charts and tables, but those are scarce, painfully scarce, I should say. I would like now to give the floor to Mr. Pashkus. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I am. I enjoyed uh, uh, reading uh, this paper and a lot of interesting um, moments. But uh, there were some uh, drawbacks, of course. Um, the first, Igor Sergeyevich always emphasizes that that the uh, economic policy was proactive. And uh, so, what is the proactive policy? Because uh, uh, it doesn't reveal that, and that uh, doesn't define, and the and it doesn't really play a great role in the dissertation. This is a substantial uh, uh, comment. Uh, and the second one, when the author talks about trade and tariff policy. Oh, uh, he needs uh, to look uh, at tactical and strategic considerations because it was uh, a long period, that 50 years, and of course uh, you have to uh, analyze the strategy as well, which uh, the author evades uh, doing, and uh, this would have been a great um, uh, complement for the work. And the next. Um, uh, some some uh, evidence uh, is uh, basically a reference to uh, papers and to uh, but unfortunately uh, not enough evidence and uh, substantiation is provided in the text itself and the next one I already made this um, uh, this comment when I uh, re reviewed his qualification, uh, final qualification work. Uh, there were some some inaccuracies. Some sources that he cites uh, are not um, used in the proper way. For example, uh, in the 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 some sources are cited in the list, but uh, there are. Uh, some sources that uh, need to be cited there that refer to trade policy, but they're not there. And uh, hopefully that uh, uh, I hope to s uh, to see in the future work uh, reference to uh, Mr. Holstein's work uh, that covered that period. And and of course, um, uh, so there's an accuracy uh, there, and so there's a combination of inaccuracies, and uh, unfortunately, this uh, these inaccuracies plague the uh, work, and um, and of course, um, the work uh, is full of statistical uh, data, and and, and one of the uh, comments here is that uh, in the initial statistical material. Um, is not uh, used widely. Uh, normally, he just uses uh, secondary statistical material inter uh, through interpretation. And um, the use of uh, mathematical methods uh, uh, could be of great help. And uh, on the whole, all the comments that I um, have made uh, uh, are of a discuss discussive uh, ma uh, manner, and they don't really uh, undermine the um, relevance and the theoretical importance of the distinction. And uh, uh, I would like to say that the defendant is worthy of uh, granting being granted this the sort degree. Yes, the next um, reviewer, please. And the dissertation of uh, Igor Arkarenko. 
uh, focuses on a very relevant topic and that makes it very relevant. Uh, the conclusions are substantiated and um, true and uh, some uh, novel uh, points are introduced but of course there are some drawbacks. I would like to cite here with um, the previous speaker uh, who talked about um, the lack of uh, initial of uh, primary statistical data this would help and the next one is that uh, the author uh, draws on the works of uh, of the economists that uh, lived in the period that he analyzes but uh, you should probably involve more the works of contemporary uh, scholars that focus on this period and the next thing I would like to draw attention to is that um, that uh, in the introduction the author draws a connection with the uh, current trade and, uh, ta and tariff policy but unfortunately in the thesis uh, this connection is very weak um, well there are some sections that uh, focus on that but uh, and some provisions uh, refer to that but uh, there's no uh, there's no valid link between what he talks before and what provisions he makes about current pol policy of Russia. And maybe we should uh, allocate uh, a, s a dedicated section to uh, the connection between, the, between today's policy and then you know, the policy at the time. Um, and of course, um, another thing the author causes, uh, focuses on two aspects of the problem. The, according to him, uh, that the economy of Russia was less developed than the European uh, policy and that the European powers uh, used uh, uh, Russia as a resource appendage. Um, but I would like to say that uh, Russia was and is now as as part of European economy and um, and of course uh, Russia f takes the niche of uh, of the, la the division of labor and um, the, the distinction of Russia uh, the difference of Russia, Russian economy from the economy of Northern America, North America and uh, Europe uh, uh, were clear but uh, they are not explained and the protectionism that um, that uh, was that dominated uh, Russian economic policy didn't really uh, boost uh, uh, the acceleration of the Russian industry and uh, the dissertation uh, has a uh, weaker structure than uh, could be and uh, the standardization uh, of this of these periods in paragraph um, one uh, there's a period uh, up to uh, up to the 90s uh, of the uh, 19th century but the analysis uh, covers the period up to the early 20th century so there's an overlap there and uh, also and uh, there's another period uh, up to uh, 1914 uh, fro from uh, 19 uh, from 1861 uh, to the uh, but the the conclusions cover the period uh, to the end of the 19th, 19th century rather than the beginning of the uh, 20th century so there's uh, an accuracy there and but on the whole the uh, my comments and my critique criticism don't diminish uh, the importance of the work and the and I believe that uh, this dissertation uh, is worthy of being granted um, this the defendant is, uh, deserves to be granted uh, the third degree 
啊。Well, overall, my report is positive. In terms of the worthiness, the scientific worthiness of this research, but many recommendations, many recom echo what I would like to recommend to the defendant. Therefore, I will be general. I believe that this uh, dissertation is descriptive. There is a lot of statistics in the text. It is scattered in the text, and therefore it is difficult to understand, difficult to analyze. There are no metrics, uh, something which used to be done by Fogel and other researchers. This would a benefit largely to your dissertation, Mr. Gerkavinko. This would make it more fundamental and more evidence-based, I should say. I think that the reason behind these drawbacks is that the title of the dissertation is uh, not uh, it is very discreet, is not focused, because a trade policy of such a vast time frame should include lots of approaches. And the tariffs and trade, the customs duties, are only one dimension of this aspect. You should also analyze the capital flow, the export, the import. And if you want to prove that it exercises some influence on other dimensions. You, sh you need statistics. You need the criteria of an assessment so as to assess the tools implemented at every stage. This is something that you fail to do. Next, you've got lots of regulatory assessments, for example, the differences between this and that resulted in something. What were the differences? And once you start referring to something innovative, you should mention the result and not refer us to something else, something rather vague and murky. Possibly. The war with the trade war with Germany could result in the events in 1914 that resulted in yet another war, but there were lots of other factors that had to interfere, and you should be aware of all of them. Overall, I should say that the generalization and the complexity of the topic compels us to give a positive decision about your dissertation. I would like to give the floor to Lim Professor Lemeshenko. Colleagues, my assessment is positive. I would like to focus on two aspects in terms of the relevance of topic. Let's refer to uh, the time that was 30 years in the past. And in those times, the trend was that the policy um, had to be liberal, but this is something that we did not see in practice. Next, each country has its own history. And the history, and its history follows a specific circle. History is more than science, I should say. Well, some aspects, mathematical aspects, graphical as aspects, are indeed important. But when uh, economists fail to be experts in history, 
in the history of economics. And once I see the surveys among students, annual surveys, what I see is that from 5 to 6 percent of the participants believe that to be an economist, you need only scarce knowledge of mathematical models. Today we are at a cross-section, I should say. Over 60 percent of export is export to Russia, echoed by ever larger volumes of export from Russia to Belarus. For one dollar of export, we need 90 cents of import, which means that the margin is quite low. But what I'm getting at is that this research is, is, a, is a positive attempt to to develop some concept, to develop some understanding of the trade and customs policy within the indicated time frame. No doubt it is quite conceptual because the time frame is vast, but to be able to identify the driver, the gear, As, refer, as you refer to tools and the means, because, as we know, trade policy is tailored to the demands of specific strata of the society. There was a lot of information in this research, but this research also has a practical dimension which makes the defendant able to identify some genetics of economics. As for recommendations, they are there and they are logical because they are justified by the formulation of the topic, by the time frame chosen. The title, the topic of the dissertation is very controversial and complicated and what I would like to see here is more references to documents. The defendant is a promise as a researcher, therefore we, so we see some references but I would like to see more of them. Next, quite often the author refers to terminology which is outdated a little bit for today. I think you should make it more integral, you should make it more uniform. This would make it a better reading. Next, the trade and customs policy of post-reform Russia is uh, analyzed deeply and some systems of due customs duties are criticized, for example, freight duties. I believe this would be more evidence-based if the uh, researcher referred to the debates among the economists in those times. I mean, this would benefit your research largely. I mean a reference to the schools in economics that were there. On page 128129 the defendant says that the trade and customs policy is closely related to social uh, policies because it influences the uh, well-being of the population and thus is closely related to the budgetary policy to export and import policies. That's all absolutely correct. But this uh, relation is not considered deeply in the dissertation. I do not see a thorough analysis of how all these aspects are interrelated. 
We should also be aware of the fact what methodology each of the schools used. And lastly, your dissertation would be more worthy and more practical if you referred to specific historical facts and circumstances. Well, there are some specific details, but they are scattered and not sufficient. I believe that the dissertation is in, is in compliance with the requirements put forward by the Higher Attestation Commission of the Ministry of Science and Education, and all my recommendations do not invalidate the practicality of your results. Therefore, the defendant deserves to be awarded with the Aspired Academic Degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Economics in 080001, Theoretical Economics. Thank you. So, Igor, the floor is yours to provide your responses. Dear colleagues, thank you very much for for your comments and for criticism and for your thorough analysis of the dissertation. I, of course, um, will use uh, these criticisms as, uh, as basis for my further research and they will correct the vector of my uh, future, future research. I would like to address uh, the concrete comments that I have just heard and uh, maybe well, maybe yes. Well, any any arbitrary uh, uh, order. Your comment uh, about the trade and uh, tariff policy. I agree that um, that I should have given my own definition of this uh, policy because uh, there's no consensus 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 in the literature about it. Uh, I understand it's a system of measures in foreign trade that leads to the changes of uh, the structure of industrial output uh, to uh, maintain uh, sovereignty and the independence of the country from foreign uh, technology. And uh, as part of these measures, uh, and there's uh, scientific and technical policy, some tariff uh, measures uh, and trade measures. And so this would be the definition that, uh, that I used in my work. Uh, addressing your question, uh, your second question, I'd like to say that uh, the gold gold ruble the introduction of gold ruben and i already uh, mentioned that uh, uh, that led to the uh, decimation well to the uh, eradication of volatility of the of currency exchange and i uh, in the second chapter i looked at the discussion of the uh, agriculturalisms agricultural uh, specialists uh, because uh, gold ruble uh, was used uh, as a vehicle of uh, transfer money from uh, the agricultural sector to the industrial sector and the second uh, the next uh, question was about struve struve was um, was a was a, uh, a Marxist was a legal uh, Marxist. Uh, he taught uh, in uh, in the university, but uh, uh, he uh, taught courses uh, of economic of economics uh, uh, of Pobedinsky. He was the adherent of uh, Marx economic Marxism. Marxism and uh, he had an idea that um, that uh, capitalism in Russia uh, actually not only happened had happened but also had uh, 
uh, outpaced the rate of capitalism in the West. Well, I don't um, focus on him um, in, uh, in, uh, individually, but I uh, refer to his works uh, as, as part of other works. As far as the graphs and uh, uh, charts uh, and the use of this, uh, what trade uh, policy? Well, I agree with that I should have used more that of that. But as far as the uh, the um, what uh, w what role a protectionism or liberal trade policy uh, played in the whole. Uh, uh, economic policy. Well, you could use uh, some graphs and uh, and charts, but um, I didn't think it would be effective. And uh, but in the future, I am going to look at that again. And I heard uh, from uh, many of you uh, from uh, the reviews. Uh, uh, that um, statistical raw statistical data uh, could should have been used more, but uh, I really uh, had a hard time of uh, finding the right statistics and also um, in, to interpret it uh, because. Um, of course, uh, and therefore I relied on the interpretations of others. Um, and uh, for me, it was difficult to um, draw conclusions on on uh, how these policies um, uh, relate to the policies of today's Russia. And maybe I should have uh, done more on that. As far as the other comments, um, in the current period, the proactive policy is understood as um, as the the action of a subject on an on an uh, directed at an object, and of course, um, is the state um, influencing the economy. But not uh, all economi economists uh, agree on the uh, the positive aspects of such policy. And um, if we 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 look at uh, proactive policy, especially if it relates to industrial policy, and um, Sergey Yulevich Vitte um, pursued this policy, and I looked at it, uh, but uh, this term uh, was not had not been coined at the time yet. And there were uh, terms like process and rationalization, and that uh, meant that uh, defined uh, also uh, an impact of a subject on an object. And um, as far as the economic uh, behavior, uh, we, in our terms, uh, we could uh, use the proactive policy term, and. Um, the next comment um, I would like to to refer to your comment about uh, the lack of description of strategies in uh, trade and tariff policy. I think that um, that trade and tariff policy were subordinate to an overall economic policy of the state and I think that uh, trade and uh, trade and tariff policy cannot be uh, an independent uh, 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 policy uh, really and the next comment uh, refers to to the academic traditions. Uh, you talked about um, uh, the uh, the uh, the research uh, that you know that uh, that I used a lot of sources uh, that related to the time, but not so many 
to, that related to uh, today's uh, research, uh, but I wanted to uh, to prove that there was research at the time, and so the economic thought is continuous in this case. As far as uh, mathematical models, uh, of course, uh, mathematical models are used in economic uh, research, but uh, normally mathematicians uh, uh, use that and uh, they apply that uh, when they study history. And of course, um, Nasowski was one of the proponents. Uh, uh, of uh, this uh, and uh, now uh, Moscow State University Leonid Yosfish Baratkin um, head of the laboratory of economic history uh, continues uh, using mathematical uh, models um, and uh, there are a lot of references to his works uh, but um, unfortunately, economists don't uh, use um, don't use uh, his theory that much. And I thought that I shouldn't do that because of this uh, situation. And um, please, um, Mr. Yurovich, uh, I would like to answer your uh, questions and comments. I would like to say that. Um, the work the well as far as the the applied character or the lack therefore of uh, uh, thereof uh, uh, in my work uh, uh, I uh, focus that on section three and um, and um, the Department uh, of uh, Economic Theory uh, decided that uh, they could recommend my conclusions um, for practical uh, uh, applications to the um, uh, the state. And as far as the uh, the the social tension that. Um, that led uh, to the war between uh, the city and the village uh, and that led to the revolution of revolutions of um, 1905 and 1917 and the um, agricultural acquisition agricultural progress requisition um, uh, campaign um, and of course uh, even at the at the time, uh, Russia was more of an agrarian country, and um, therefore, uh, in the Soviet times, um, there was um, uh, there was a, a, a renewed focus on industrialization, and. Um, and this barrier was largely between the city and the the country removed uh, and uh, if there was no connection between the agriculture center sector and the industrial sector then the, uh, the industrialization that took place uh, wouldn't have taken place uh, 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 and so fast and uh, well, uh, as far as the three stages that were discussed and the uh, only two stages that uh, that I have conclusions for, well, I had to uh, to separate uh, different stages uh, in order to get deeper into the period and uh, Although these, but I can say that uh, historical um, uh, 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 boundaries uh, are uh, quite blurred because history is a continuous process. As far as the uh, the, pro uh, the questions of Alexey Gavich, thank you very much.
to, uh, f uh, for being able to come here today, I'll, although you have a flu a little bit, uh, but um, as far as the reverse tariffs, Well, actually, there was no such term in contemporary historical tradition, history tradition. Well, it rather, I should say, it it is, but it it is mentioned very rarely. I personally came across this term no more than something three times within the considered time frame. Russian economists refer to this time frame using this term, but quite rarely. Well, as for the last recommendations, the recommendations provided by Professor Lemeshenko, well, I agree with the fact that I should have followed an older tradition in terms of choosing the proper terminology. And th this is something that I promise I will be aware of uh, in the future. In my dissertation, I tried to do some comparison with contemporary frameworks, but probably this comparison was not too explicit. Quite often, the past is mixed with uh, some biased assessments. Moreover, my dissertation was limited in terms of volume. Therefore, I tried to focus on the most important aspects. I agree with uh, Professor Lemeshenko in the statement that the trade policy impacts directly the well-being of the population. Therefore, it is something vast, more vast than the economic policy. All of these factors altogether determine the choice of the topic for research. If there are any questions unanswered, I'm ready to take them. Thank you so much. According to the procedure, we should give the floor to members of the audience, but none of the members of the audience have registered to take the floor. Therefore, colleagues, if you would like to open the floor to discussion, we have time for that. Just a second. Okay. Yes, exactly. So we can open the floor for discussion. Those wishing to take the floor, please, you're welcome. Well, you know, when I was asked to provide my response to this dissertation, it was just a dissertation. It was not a human being speaking to me. Therefore, whether it's right or not, I have three criteria that I usually refer to in my assessments uh, to make the final judgment whether pass or fail. Well, the first thing is I stick to what is written in the dissertation. 
Next is the practical dimension. I'm not going to repeat what I have already said. And third is the insight into the issues that the author discusses. Once I was uh, presented with your commentaries, I believe that, yes, indeed, we can recommend this uh, dissertation as a valid dissertation for the aspired decree. To me, a dissertation in the history of economics, so the history of uh, the thought in economics, it has to be has to be determined by specific objectives. And it has to show very explicitly the author's contribution. But the very fact that the trade policy was an impetus for further industrialization, both well, this statement has been discussed vast, vastly in both history, uh, literature on history and contemporary history on economics, where authors compare uh, pre-Soviet and post-Soviet industrialization. I believe that when the author does a research devoted to economics, the author has to identify some specific features, some specific traits of this particular time frame under discussion that have never been identified before, or to show a different approach, a different interpretation of the specific developments within this time frame. To this end, researchers refer to statistics and analyze it respectively by teleometric tools or they refer to archives and documents so as to provide a solid assessment of the developments that took place within the considered time span. I mean, economics is not about mathematics only. Therefore, I believe that the recommendations that have been presented here today, not by me only, but by my colleagues as well, are something that you should consider for your future. So you should be very specific to show what has been done, what you want to do, and you have to prove that this is relevant by way of statistics. As for the tariffs, well, the tariffs ha were analyzed even in those years. Today, even the uh, Chamber of Trade and Commerce uh, suggests to introduce the Middle East tariff, but today, there is the WTO, and the WTO may interfere because Russia is subject to the rules vested into the, uh, the principles of these institutions under the umbrella of the WTO. So these tools would reinforce your conclusions. But what we see is that your report was done very well, whereas your responses to answers were just not valid. I cannot support what you said, because there was no other way to prove your position for this specific time frame. If this event is well known, then how does this make you innovative, your interpretation innovative? This clear-cut truth, this basis of evidence would largely benefit your dissertation, but I believe you will deliver on that in the future. 
what I fancy most is that you have tapped a vast scope of sources and data to justify the transition from confessionalism to protectionalism. But there is no assessment of capital flow, and this aspect is missing. Why is it missing? Because the objective is too vast. It has too large of a scale. I believe that the defendant wanted to be on the same footing as William Shakespeare. And he actually failed because the methods and the tools at the defendant's disposal were insufficient, were too scarce. However, whatever the case, the dissertation is descriptive, but there are a number of assessments that are quite practical and evidence-based and trustworthy. So everything, everything is shaped by the verification of the trade policies. What you do not consider the entire scope of the trade, you don't consider the landscape, although statistics is vast from 1900 to 1914, as well as the examples with reverse duties are, in terms of the evidence basis, a contribution. Those are the novelty of this research. As the general takeaway, what we see is that the scope of evidence, the scope of tools and methods has to be enhanced. Overall, I'm thinking positive. Anyone else to comment on the responses? Well, uh, as for the relevance, well, this is something that is, uh, it could be a, uh, seen as a conclusion from your research. So today, I believe that we should stay focused on bilateral agreements. Those have proved to be more efficient than joining some specific organizations when you have to open your markets for everyone. And then it is very difficult to apply some regulation. So the dissertation showed what could follow. What's more, joining the WTO does not mean that Russia will be exempt of sanctions. Sanctions are there. Therefore, these favorable conditions, the favorable policies are not something that is efficient. And this, therefore, it is always challenged automatically joining to my colleague, I would like to also highlight that it would make your dissertation more worthy if you have delivered on that. So please keep it in mind. So I see no one else wishing to take the floor. Therefore, I would like to give the floor to the research supervisor, Professor Blagich, Professor of Economics and the Theory of Economics at St. Petersburg State University. Distinguished Chair, distinguished members of the Dissertation Board, me as a research supervisor, well, I should say that this is not my first uh, defendant, this is not my first postgraduate. My experience shows that uh, 
only with time are we able to understand the relevance and the value of a dissertation. This dissertation was included into the regular plan of our department. Our department has a very well established school of economics and history of economics. We are intensively looking into the time frame from 1860, once Russia used to have a market economy. As of the 90s, we started to integrate foreign textbooks into our curricula, and what we're having now is that we look, uh, we study by Nordhaus and not Chuprov, or some other, there could be some other name, some Dobrynian or whoever, but this is not the main idea. The idea is to bridge this gap, and to this end, this dissertation is efficient because today. A lot is being said about new industrialization by the president, by the head of the government, and so many others. But once we're starting to refer to the sources of neo industrialization, we find a dead end. The same was attempted to be implemented in the revolution. And actually, the rural areas, the population of the rural areas interfered and therefore the revolution hit the country. No one would actually follow the same path as it was in the past. Therefore, we are at a crossroads and we are unable to find a proper response to the new industrialization. One of the dimensions was the trade and industrial policy. This is something that the defendant considers in his dissertation. Overall, the dissertation is in compliance with the relevant requirements. Mr. Garkavinko has uh, invested a lot of efforts into this dissertation. His assignments at the once he was a student were devoted to this particular topic. He also defended an assignment as a postgraduate. This topic is indeed vast and highly complicated, and the task of a historian is to is to process the data, to analyze the data and to come up with some clear-cut terms that can be implemented in the further research tradition. Garkavinko is a hard-working and a laborious scientist. He is able to produce a research text, to find specific research wordings, There are few departments that are looking into the economic theory of Russia. The dissertation is in compliance with the requirements for uh, the uh, dissertation submitted for Doctor of Philosophy academic decree. It has a practical dimension. Once again, as history runs, the dissertation does not tell us what to do. It just allows us to develop some insight into the historical and economic developments of those time. I believe that Mr. Garkavinko is a promise for the history of economics. Thank you. I would like to announce a five-minute break uh, for the dissertation council uh, to
to discuss the dissertation and reach a verdict and be prepared for open voting. Uh, please, uh, everyone, uh, uh, please uh, leave the auditorium. And So the meeting of the dissertation board is resumed. Please switch on the broadcasting. Is broadcasting working? Mics are working? Good. I would like to put to vote the issue of awarding Mr. Garkavinko with his pilot academic degree. And uh, we have two to uh, comply with the following uh, more than uh, two-thirds of the uh, dissertation council members uh, should uh, vote in favor in order to uh, to have a final ver a positive verdict and uh, I would like to Pashkus Vladimir uh, yes so your opinion is counted uh, sorry uh, uh, yeah yes yeah and Mirf Miropolsky yes and uh, I vote in favor as well and now i would like to announce that that the the this station council uh, uh, for the defense of uh, mr garkavenko uh, to seek the degree of um, of an economic degree and the top on the topic uh, theory and practice of uh, trade and tariff policy uh, customs policy in uh, 
uh, reformed Russia, 1861-1941. All five members of the academic of the Distinction Council voted in favor of granting the sword degree. And so, Igor Sergeyevich, uh, you have uh, now the time for uh, concluding remarks. Dear members of the Distinction Council, I would like to uh, thank you sincerely for the confidence that you invested in me and for taking part in the work of the Distinction Council and for making such valid uh, uh, comments uh, and uh, criticisms of, uh, of my work that would uh, serve as the foundation for my future research and uh, would lay groundwork f for for f for more in-depth uh, research uh, and uh, I uh, it's very important for me it was very important for me f uh, to hear your remarks today and I would like to thank you again for your respect and I hope that I will uh, uh, deliver on this trust. The dissertation is, uh, is uh, now announced closed. Uh, thank you very much uh, for everyone who participated.